The ocean speaks in a language most of us cannot hear, and yet it is always speaking, carrying its voice across the vast expanse of the deep where sunlight fails and pressure crushes all but the hardest forms of life, and in that silence, sound becomes the only witness to what lies beneath. In the summer of 1999, the Pacific Ocean spoke in a way that no human had ever truly understood, producing a sound so powerful that it shook the waters farther than any known creature. Louder than blue whales, whose songs themselves traverse entire oceans, and yet Julia's resonance traveled even farther, twisting through underwater channels that were invisible to the eye and impossible to trace, as if the sea itself were reaching out to announce its presence. Scientists at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration first recorded it with hydrophones placed across the Pacific, and when they listened, they realized that what they had captured was unlike anything ever documented. A low, pulsing hum that began faintly, almost like a whisper, and then grew, swelling through the waters until it seemed as if the ocean were drawing a single, deliberate breath, one that carried both power and a strange, eerie consciousness. For nearly two minutes, Julia moved through the water, traveling along the deep sound channel, a natural layer in the ocean where temperature and pressure bend sound waves and carry them across vast distances with minimal loss of energy. And although scientists tried to pinpoint the source, no location seemed to contain it fully, because it was not merely a local phenomenon, but an event that resonated across thousands of miles, and in that resonance, there was something almost intentional, something that suggested movement beyond the mechanical, beyond the geological, beyond even the songs of the largest creatures known to humankind. Even the blue whale, which can project its voice across the ocean for hundreds of kilometers, would have been drowned out by the sheer force of Julia, and yet despite its magnitude, there was a pattern, a cadence, a rise and fall that made it feel alive, as though the sea itself were conscious, testing the limits of the instruments, probing the minds of those who listened, and in that awareness, the sound became more than mere physics. It became a presence. Theories emerged quickly, but none could satisfy the curiosity or quell the unease. Some argued that it was a massive iceberg grounding itself against the Antarctic seafloor, and while ice does produce sound under immense pressure, it rarely carries the complexity that Julia exhibited, and yet the pattern was undeniable, a rhythm that seemed to move with intent, a signal that neither could be fully explained by nature nor fully dismissed by logic. Others proposed tectonic movements, shifting plates that groaned under pressure, and yet even these tremors lacked the precision, the almost musical rise and fall, and so the scientists debated, measured, and replayed the recordings again and again, trying to reconcile the laws of nature with the feeling that something extraordinary had been captured, something so vast, so ancient, and yet so deliberate that it could not simply be reduced to ice or rock or known creatures of the deep. The ocean itself remains mostly unknown, less than 5% of it ever fully explored, and while humans have developed instruments and techniques to observe, to map, to capture its movements, Julia reminds us that knowledge is always incomplete, because the sea is patient, indifferent, and immense, and it carries secrets across channels and depths that no human has yet penetrated. The sound traveled farther than expected, and in doing so, it passed through instruments, recording stations, and yet no one could replicate it, no human creation could match it, and no other animal could produce anything similar. The deep sound channel amplified it and carried it as a ghostly presence across continents, and even decades later, the echo of that presence lingers, recorded in memory, on tape, in the minds of those who first heard it, and in the imagination of anyone who contemplates what it might have been or what it might still be. When the recordings were slowed and stretched into a range audible to the human ear, the sound became more than a physical event. It became a voice, eerie, haunting, almost sentient, and in that voice, the imagination trembles, for it is impossible not to hear intention, even if the origin remains a mystery. It is possible to compare it to other deep-sea sounds, like the bloop or the upsweep, but Julia is different. It possesses a clarity, a pattern, a life that none of the others achieved, and yet it is gone from our recordings, leaving only the memory and the haunting possibility that the ocean still carries it somewhere, 
beyond the reach of human senses, beyond the edge of our instruments, and perhaps beyond the comprehension of anything alive on the surface. Some nights, when the water is calm and the Antarctic wind falls silent, it is possible to imagine that Julia still moves, stretching its voice through the frozen layers, through the pressure and darkness, listening and waiting. A reminder that the ocean is not merely water, ice, and currents, but a cathedral of unimaginable forces, indifferent, eternal, and aware in ways we may never understand. Perhaps it was only ice, perhaps tectonic activity, perhaps some creature so vast and old that its movements shaped the sea itself, and yet the pattern remains the cadence of something deliberate, and if we listen closely enough, it feels as if the ocean is speaking still, and we are only beginning to hear. It is gone from our instruments, but it has not left the world. The echo is memory, and memory is never lost.